show before Brandon does the second demo, one thing that came up um, is how to, and we're going to go over this at the end, but if you want to download those exercise files so that you can have, have it open on a different screen. Oh my gosh. Um, I'll show you how to do that in case you don't know. So you're going to go again to shared workshop breakout room instructions. If you right click or control click on the file you want, this menu drop down menu comes up. You can hit download and it's going to download the file to your computer. And then you can open it up as either a PDF or an HTML, however it's saved, and you can have it up on your own computer next to your um, Jupyter Hub screen. Anything else that we should go over that would be helpful for the entire group before we start the next demo. I, I, I don't think the breakout rooms are quite gonna be long enough for people to go through all of the exercises, um, but hopefully it gets people started so that they can finish them on their own. The way that I wrote these, I try to, I try to get your uh, money's worth for the exercises. And yeah, don't feel bad if you can't finish everything. Um, So that being said, I'll share my screen. And um, also to complement what Bethany uh, talked about with splitting actual views, one thing that I learned in the first uh, breakout session is that you actually don't need to download the, the, the data set. You can just take a tab, you can drag it, and you can split it. Um, within the actual the actual hub. So if I want to if I want to have it like side by side here, I can have two tabs open directly within the hub. Um, so in case you don't want to download it and go through that, um, yeah. All right. With that being said, um, this is now. We are, we are now moving on to uncharted territory. I'm just gonna close workshop two. This is now officially the start of workshop three. Um, and here today is, we're gonna go over kind of like the, the next component of our basics. Um, and that is the idea of what packages are and then how we can use packages in the context of the Ilse Jupyter Hub. And we're gonna use and, and just because of time constraint, we're going to be looking at one particularly very useful package for data wrangling and manipulating data, and that is dplyr. And then that's going to bring us into a very uh, powerful component of R, which is chaining together functions, uh, one and another. And then if we have time or if you're feeling adventurous, I have a little bonus section here that you can take a look at, which is plotting different levels of categorical data using ggplot2. And again, this is just a supplementary to the main components of what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. So with that being said, um, what we've been using so far in R is essentially right out of the bag, like right out of the box. You just started an R session within a Jupyter Hub kernel and you're running what we call base r right and so when you start r it's going to have a complete you know set of functions that you can do a lot of cool stuff with so you can do visualizations you can do some uh you can do a lot of statistics um and you can do some you know simple data wrangling tasks um and that that might be good and all but however as like the scope of your research starts to get more specific, right? General R is not going to cover every single task. And this is where the concept of packages comes into play. And so remember, everything in R is essentially a function. And so what packages are, you can think of a package as quite literally a physical package, like a box that you would get in the mail. And you would load this theoretical package into R. And what this is going to do is it's going to introduce a whole new set of functions 
for you to utilize within your R session, right? And these functions that are loaded from these packages can help us achieve and what I'm highlighting here in the text here is something that's more specific uh, for a particular research topic, or maybe there's something that's far simpler and easier to accomplish um, using a package as, as opposed to a more like basic R approach. And this is where something like dplyr comes in handy. Um, so on the LC Jupyter Hub, you don't have to worry about actually installing packages. We have a whole bunch of packages already pre-installed. Um, and if you do want new packages installed, you would have to, um, you, could, you can talk to like Francisco, Bethany, or and I, and we can vet it, and then we can actually get that loaded onto the hub for you. Um, and so here's an example of some of the packages I use. Um, so, you know, I've like, going through like my day-to-day -day tasks of like you know data manipulation data handling these are some of the packages i probably use the most and quite a lot of other data scientists do as well um so i've highlighted these in this uh this table and so each package has a name and so one that we're going to be looking at today is dplyr which is for data wrangling there's also this package called tidyr so usually the data that you get is maybe not in this really clean, pristine shape. And so TidyR comes with different functions that helps us clean up our data. Um, then there's ggplot2. You may have already heard of this, but this is um, some pretty like enhanced levels of plotting and visualization that you can like really start to make publication worthy uh, uh, plots and, and visualizations for your data. And it's based off of this whole concept of the grammar of graphics, which is a book that came out a while back. And then we have Stringer, um, which is like for text handling. So if you're working with a lot of text, uh, Stringer comes with functions that uh, work a lot with text handling. And then, you know, for our type of research for like plant breeding, genomic prediction, linear models, mixed model equations, we have specific packages for that. So things like Summer, um, uh, a lot of people use this for genomic prediction and mixed model equation solving. And then, of course, we have our Tassel. Uh, which is the R interface to Tassel. Um, so again, this is just a snapshot of some of the packages that we can load into R. So remember, a package is just a set of custom functions that we can bring into our environment. So how do we actually load a package into R? And so what we do is we use a function, and that function is going to take a parameter called package. And that package is the name of the package. And so, for example, we're going to load this package called dplyr. And so to do that, you, use, you type in library and then parentheses, use the name of the package. And this does not have to be in quotes. And then when you hit enter, the package is loaded. And depending on the package, you might get these specific outputs. Um, and so what it's showing here is that it's attaching this package called dplyr, but you also get some of these warning messages where some functions are masked from uh, other packages. And so what we mean by masking is that some functions that we load into R will have a name. Then when we load in another package, they may have that same name, right? And so there might be some type of conflict. And so with that conflict, uh, the precedence or which of those actual functions takes place. And so in this case, this filter and uh, LAG function are going to take precedence from the dplyr package as opposed to the stats package. And so just keep that in mind when you're uh, uh, working with these, these packages and the functions that are coming from these packages. Um, so we loaded uh, this library. And so now essentially what we've done, interesting, what we've done is we've uh, we've loaded all of these functions into our R session, right? And so what functions did we actually load into R? And so to do that, if you, if you want to know what functions are available within a package that are loaded, what you can do is you can take the name of the package um, type two uh, colons after the name and then hit tab on your keyboard. And when you hit tab, that's going to bring uh, up all of the different functions that are loaded from this package. 
So if I want to, you know, know more about something like this between function, remember, we can also use the built in help function within uh, Jupyter Hub and also R, and then call that and we'll bring up a help page. And that'll bring up basically everything we need to know about this function. What are the inputs? What are the parameters that we need? What's being returned? Some examples of how to use that within uh, this uh, within this uh, uh, dplyr package. Um, and then we can also see what packages are already installed using this installed uh, packages function. And what that's going to return is essentially a data frame. So similar to the data that we're working on with all of the metadata for that available package. Um, and if we want to be more specific, we can, you know, we can just call the row name. So we can use that row name accessor similar to column names for a data frame on this installed packages. And then we can get a vector or a group of names for each one of the packages that is available on the Jupyter Hub. <clears throat> so with that being said, I don't know why this is showing up, but it doesn't seem to be huh. interesting. There must be a little bug that's popping up on the Hub. Uh, but usually that does not show up. Um, um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to load a package. We're going to load dplyr. And so dplyr is basically a way that we can, you know, bring in all of these different functions and uh, essentially easily manipulate our data as opposed to like base R. And so these sets of operations that are provided in this package are based off of, you know, what dimension or what part of the actual data frame that we want to manipulate or to work on. So we have, and you, and you notice that instead of like using brackets and dollar sign operators, all of these are specific like one word functions that are based off of an English verb that if you were just to read this, it would, you know, kind of make sense to you like filter. Oh, we must be filtering something selecting. Oh, we must be selecting something from our data frame. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read in the data that we've been working on earlier today and also from the last session. And just to show the data set that we've all been working on, here we have, and this is what I'm going to use to show some of these dplyr methods. And so we have this uh, filter. So the first thing we're going to talk about is filter. And so this is a row operation. And so this is going to subset uh, rows based on a condition. Um, and so to do that, we use this filter. Uh, close parentheses and open parentheses function. And we we do this based off of a condition. And so I have this little cheat sheet of what conditions are in, in R. Um, yeah. And so what that actually is, is we're, 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 we're filtering rows based off of a, a condition. And in this case, let's say we have our data frame here and we want to filter based off of our location. In our data frame, because remember we have New York and Iowa, NY and IA in our data frame. What we can do is we can pass that data frame object to this filter function, and use that column location, and then use a condition, and set that. So what this is saying is, give me the locations that are equal to. So in this column, which ones? are have this ny value and just return those and now i have instead of a data frame that's 20 by 4 i have a data frame that's 10 by 4 because we're just filtering out just the new york uh, values we can also apply that to numbers or numeric data so here we have your diameter i want you to filter out anything that is or anything that's less than or I want you to return in this case any values that are greater than the value of 35. So looking through here only return the values that are larger than this 35 value. So I return that I get a data frame of eight by four. And so each one of these values is bigger than the value 35. Um, and again, I have this little cheat sheet that you can take a look at. 
Um, and then the next one is a range. And so, you know, we're, we're measuring all these things and not all of these are in specific order. We can reorder the rows based off of a, a given value. So let's say we want to rearrange our data based off of an ear diameter. Um, so if we take our data frame and apply it to this uh, data set, we then reorder our data from smallest to largest. And then we can also go in descending order using this descend function from dplyr. So instead of going from small to large, we're now going from large to small. Then we can do column operations. So again, a lot of these are just taking a data frame, applying it to a function, and then you know what part of that data frame do we want to select on? So if we want to select, here I have the column names. And let's say I want to select uh, like location, ear diameter, and sample. So I do that. We just return those columns from our data frame. And then notice that depending on the order that I have the parameters in this function, that's going to change the order in our actual data frame. Um, we can also use uh, rename. So if we want something that's a little bit more specific instead of this, maybe we want to add the units of measurement to our columns. We can use this rename function, pass our data frame. And now what we're doing is we're taking what columns that we want to change and setting that name, that new name as a parameter. So in this case, ear diameter, we want to change that to ear diameter with this uh, mm or millimeters, and then ear height to ear height centimeters. And so you notice that ear diameter it now has the millimeters, ear height has the centimeters. And again, if I'm going a little quick, remember I'm going to have a copy of this for you to look at later. Um, and then also one thing to note is that when we're passing variables, right, none of this is changing the actual data frame. We have to assign that to an actual new variable. In this case, I'm just going to pass it to a new thing called myDF renamed. And then I call the head of that. And now this variable has those new changes. And then we can also add new columns based off of other columns. So with this uh, a uh, fun little word here, mutate, which is just means to change. In this case, we're changing our data frame. We're just adding new columns in this case. So let's say, you know, you get observations that are in one unit of measurement and we want to convert that to another unit of measurement. Um, so in this case, you know, we want to convert something from centimeters to inches. Um, what we can do is we can mutate this renamed data frame um, and we can pass that to a new column. So what I'm highlighting right here, we can pass that to a new column and then using what our prior column is and then dividing that or just doing a, a specific operation on that column to convert it. So in this case, we're just taking each one of those values that's found in this column and dividing each one of those by the value of 2.54 to get our inches. So now you see we have a five columns, we have our last column here, and these are now converted to inches. So now, as you can imagine, oh, we can start to filter, right? You might wanna do something like this. I am gonna like, maybe I just wanna filter on Iowa, and then, oh, I'm gonna pull out the values for that. I get some values. Now I can start applying some functions to those values and get a mean. Oh, now I can like copy this because there's two categories, right? And do like New York, just dismiss this weird error that's popping up. And then you can start to continuously do this, right? And this is like two levels, right? But what if you have like 50 levels in your data frame, right? This, you know, this kind of thing that what we're trying to do here, what you may want to approach may not work or might not be the best practice. And so this is where probably the most powerful thing in dplyr is where we can start to summarize our data by groups or are these conditional levels that are found in this, for example, in this location. 
So first we have the summarize, right? And so what the summarize function is doing is that it's taking all of our data, all of the data in a specific column and summarizing it or collapsing it to one value. So in this case, we want to take the mean and the standard deviation of both of those columns. So we can use the summarize method for ear diameter and get the mean and standard deviation for this uh, observation, or I'm sorry, this uh, variable, right? But now you notice we have different levels. So what you can do is you can take that same component and now take that data frame and then wrap it in another function, this group by function in dplyr. And so you pass your data frame and what do you wanna group it by? You wanna group it by this location. So we can do that. And now you've broken up your data into its different levels and now you've calculated operations on each one of those categories, right? But now you start to look at something like this and that starts to get a little unruly, right? You're starting to nest functions within functions within functions. And so what this is trying to show is like, this is starting to become illegible, right? Is there a way that, you know, can we like this, this whole like variable assignment synonym that I came up with last time, where it's like, you have a variable, you pipe that into, a variable name, and then you use that name to use to then proceed on to another function, right? And this is where chaining things comes in very handy. Um, and so to do this, dplyr comes loaded with what is called a piping operator. And so it looks something like this, right? It's these two percent signs followed by this uh, right angle bracket. And so you kind of think about that as kind of like a directional arrow, right? We have the input coming in from one function or the output coming from one function is going to be the input for another function. And then we can just keep, continue to chain that together. And so one great example, because uh, Francisco and I were actually talking about food the other day. And uh, what we have right here is just kind of like a little example of, of what, we're, what we're showing by this, like, let's say you want to bake a cake, right? And you have a function, you have a library called bake or whatever, baker. And you have all of these functions to bake your cake, right? And you start with raw materials, right? Those raw materials, first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix them all together. So you're taking these raw materials, putting it into this mix function. That mix function, you're mixing everything together. That's gonna go into uh, this bake operation. We'll wait for this to, pass through. So we get the mix. Mix makes a bowl. That bowl is going into this bake. We make a cake. We want to decorate that cake. And then what we want to do is we want to get a slice of the cake to serve. And so basically we're starting from one set of data, performing all these different operations, and then getting a specific output, right? So taking the same concept, well, actually, let's let's start simple, right? So we have a, a data frame here. Let's just use a head, the head function, right? So we can take that data frame, pull it out of that head function, pipe it in using this, this operator into this head, and then we get this, right? And now we can apply that same concept to this unruly statement right here, where we start with our data frame, we're going to group by a specific location, we're going to summarize based off of those locations, two things. We're going to summarize the average for our measure or our, our trait here, and then also the standard deviation. And I run that, I get the same thing. And this looks a little bit more straightforward, right? We're starting with the data frame, doing an operation, and we're doing a summary. So I know I went by a little quick on that, um this is going to be this this is going to be uploaded in the same uh location here i have a breakout room that's found in uh breakout room instructions so if go to work workshop this will be uh number six on our our topic here which is our basics breakout um, take a look at that 
And then for a copy of this document, that's going to be in workshop notes. And it's going to be going to be here, I think. It lets me load. But yeah, so a copy of this is going to be there. Um, maybe not. But yeah, so if we want to get into breakout rooms and go through uh, the exercise. Um, 